What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. I hope you all are doing exceptionally well today. I'm doing very, very well as well. How many times can I say well in this intro? Welcome guys. Today we are opening up a pack of Journey into NYX. Uh, this set, not the best if I'm going to be honest. There were not a whole lot of like crazy great cards. Uh, during the standard time we saw a lot of like Esper control decks and things like that kind of take over. We did see some like modern black devotion, things like that. Uh, but... It really wasn't the best standard environment, and unfortunately not a whole lot of cards stuck around. Uh, there were a few, of course, as always, and hopefully we'll open some of those today, but we are going to go through this as if we're drafting, uh, so we will hopefully be able to figure out what our pack one pick one pick would be if we were drafting this set. So our first card here is Rouse the Mob. It's an instant for one red. It has Strive, which is a mechanic uh, specific to this set. And it costs two and a red more to cast for each target beyond the first. So uh, what this does is add a little bit of flexibility to all of your cards that have it. Uh, you can either cast it for its regular casting cost and only hit one card, or you can add that additional three mana and hopefully target more than one. Uh, for each one, obviously, it is going to ca uh, cost excuse me, that extra three, but... Any number of target creatures each get plus two, plus zero, and gain trample until the end of the turn. So, really interesting card here. Uh, definitely just a combat trick, but it does represent that strive mechanic fairly well. Uh, I wouldn't first pick this by any means, but in red, I do think it's a nice one. Uh, to have that little bit of extra flexibility to hopefully target more than just one creature is great. Uh, and what this, this just means is that, you know, as you get further along in the game, uh, ideally you get to uh, hopefully scale up all of your combat tricks a little bit, or in this case, the combat tricks. So really, really cool, but definitely not a first pick. Uh, Font of Vigor is an enchantment for one and a white, uh, pay two and a white and sacrifice it and you gain seven life. Uh, this I do not love at all. Uh, it does play into the theme, so enchantments were a pretty big, uh, kind of staple in this, this whole really, uh, block excuse me i could not think of the word uh this whole block enchantments were a huge theme we had a lot of enchantment creatures which was really cool that was new and introduced in this stuff uh but it also played into the devotion mechanic it, it was uh ideally able to bu uh, bolster up your devotion to a particular color and if it did that then hopefully you were able to get a little bit of a bonus off of it uh this does play into that however this is a very terrible card in my opinion just in general uh gaining seven life for in total uh excuse me five mana is quite bad uh it it just doesn't do anything unfortunately you would much rather have some kind of a creature or something that really impacts the board a little bit more substantially uh something like this just really doesn't do it and so definitely definitely a pass in my opinion uh oak heart dryads is an enchantment creature again we just talked about that it's a two three for two and a green and it has constellations, so whenever it uh, or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, target creature gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. So here you see all that, that bolstering up from enchantments. It really is a huge theme in this set. It's nice to be able to pick up some of these early in a draft, just because you want to be able to boost up your enchantment level uh, as much as possible to hopefully gain uh, a little bit of extra edge against your opponent's deck with cards like these, which help you bo uh, bolster up your creatures as well. So I actually really like this card. I don't think it's an amazing one, but uh, definitely so far it is the pick. It just allows you to uh, to boost up your creature stats a little bit, and that's always uh, welcome. It is a 2-3 three for 3, which is a little bit low, but because of that enchantment creature, uh, it does uh, supply a little bit of synergy there that you wouldn't normally see. So I think that kind of makes it a little more worth it for sure. Uh, Feast of Dreams is an instant for one and a black destroy target enchanted creature or enchantment creature. So uh, here is a really interesting card, a card that would probably really only work uh, in this block. Uh, it doesn't really do well outside of this block because there aren't very many enchantment creatures outside of this block. But uh, in this one, it's actually not too bad. You're probably going to be running into uh, an enchantment creature or an enchant creature uh, at some point in your game. Uh, it's very, very likely that you will see at least one or two in any deck, uh, if not probably a good bit more than that. Uh, this is just a very efficient way to deal with those, and I actually do think this beats out the Oak Heart Dryads because in this set, again, specific to this set, but in this set, it is very, very good removal. 
Uh, it's efficient, instant speed, very flexible. I like that. Uh, obviously, enchantment creatures and enchanted creatures can actually be the same thing in certain instances. Uh, we see that with, uh, I can't remember the mechanic uh, exactly how it was laid out, but uh, essentially you could actually enchant a creature with an enchantment creature. It was really interesting. Uh, bestow, that was the mechanic. Uh, and so if you bestow something on, you can destroy either, which is really interesting. But this is a very good card in this set, and I do uh, think so far it's the pick. Uh, Hubris is an instant for one and a blue return target creature and all auras attached to it to their owner's hands. Uh, this is just a really efficient bounce spell. It's even better in this deck because of all these enchantments. Uh, obviously, you're going to be able to hopefully bounce a lot of stuff, not just one creature. But even if it is only one, it's two mana and instant speed, and that's quite good. Uh, it's a little bit less flexible than some other bounce spells, which might hit just a target permanent or a non-land permanent or something like that. Uh, and that would certainly make it better, but I do think in this set, uh, excuse me, I think this is a very good card. It's definitely one that I would run. Rather have Feast of Dreams just because it's actually hard removal, not just tempo bounce, but uh, not bad for sure. I would definitely run it in a blue tempo deck. Uh, Pin to the Earth is an enchant creature aura for one and a blue, and the enchanted creature gets minus six, minus zero. So this is a really interesting one. It's not a removal spell, uh, but it does kind of blank creatures a little bit. Uh, the trouble with a card like this is that it doesn't actually affect the toughness, which means they can still stick on the battlefield and just block for days. Uh, so you have to be really careful about what you're putting this on, because sometimes while you may kind of blank a threat, uh, you're not actually forwarding your game plan very much. You're just stalling the opponent. Uh, I Because of that, I, it's not my favorite card, but it's definitely kind of pseudo removal in blue. Uh, so it's worth picking up maybe mid to late pack if you find one. Uh, but in general, I'm not super stoked about a card like this just because it doesn't actually deal with the creature long term. It kind of just blanks it uh, and lets it sit there and hopefully, you know, on the opponent's end, they're hoping it's just going to sit there and block for days. So I don't love it, but uh, it is worth playing occasionally. It just kind of depends on what you get through the rest of the pack. Uh, Ferris Band Thunderhoof uh, is a 3-4 four for 4 and a green. It has Heroic, uh, which was a really interesting mechanic. So whenever you cast a spell that targets it, put two 1-1 one, one counters on the Thunderfoot. So uh, this really, really was an interesting mechanic because it kind of supplied uh, a Voltron strategy to Limited, uh, which was really interesting. Now, obviously, you can't go full Voltron because if you lose one creature, obviously, you're kind of done. Uh, but the ability to really, really boost up your creatures with things like combat tricks and stuff like that, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, because all you had to do was use a combat trick on this, and it all of a sudden became this ridiculously strong threat that the opponent has to deal with. So it is really, really good. I don't know if it's better than Feast of Dreams. Uh, I think I would stick with the, the removal spell here. But this is a very powerful card uh, for a common, especially. It's a little bit understated initially, but if you can get one trigger off of that heroic, it's probably going to be worth it. Uh, Gluttonous Cyclops is a 5 4 for 5 and a red. You can pay 5 and 2 red to Monstrosity 3 this. So if this creature isn't monstrous, put 3 1 1 counters on it and it becomes monstrous. So this is only a one time use. I just want to point that out. Uh, but you ideally can get this up to a. 8-7 if you really really uh you know use your mana wisely and can really get it out there uh the the danger here is obviously it's a huge investment for you know one creature if they have a removal spell it's going to be really really detrimental to you uh to lose that creature and that's not going to be very fun however that does supply a very good bomb and in some cases just a really good mana sink uh if you happen to not be drawing super well in the late game so I don't love this one. This isn't the best card uh, in the world to, to sh uh, showcase that monstrosity mechanic, but it is a really interesting one, and it's definitely one that does you know really put you over the top if the opponent does not have anything to deal with. Uh, Blood Crazed Hoplite, I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, is a 2-1 for 1 and a black. It has heroic, so whenever you cast a spell that targets it, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Um, whenever a 1-1 one, one counter is placed on it, remove a 1-1 one, one counter from target creature and opponent controls. So this is a really interesting card. I don't love it because honestly, while it's great to be able to, to you know, power up your own creature, I think that's great. Uh, you probably aren't going to necessarily get a ton of value off of this depending on the deck you're against. Uh, if you're against a, another heroic deck, obviously you're probably going to get some value off of it. But if you're against just like an enchantment deck or something like that, 
Probably not so much. And so uh, while I do like this card, I think it's just a perfectly fine two drop. It's not like a, a premium pick by any means. Uh, and so for, for this case, I definitely don't think it's the pick here. Uh, oppressive Raze is an enchant creature aura for one white. Uh, the enchanted creature can't attack or block unless its controller pays three, and then activated abilities of the enchanted creature, creature excuse me, cost three more to activate. So really interesting card here. Uh, it isn't technically full on removal, but it does really, really put a damper on the opponent's mana if they want to use that creature. Uh, and that can be very, very good, especially for only one white mana on your part. It's a very minimal investment. Uh, it is an enchantment, so it's going to have a lot of synergy. It's going to die to things like Feast of Dreams, stuff like that, so just be aware. Uh, but I do think this is a pretty powerful card. I think, honestly, in this set, though, I'd still rather have the Feast of Dreams, uh, just because it does hit not only cards like this, but also a lot of enchantment creatures and things like that. Uh, and so I think it's a little bit more flexible than the Raze, but the Raze is very good. Uh, definitely a, a solid uh, pseudo-removal spell in white if you need to pick it up. Uh, our first uncommon here is Wildfire Cerber Cerberus, excuse me. Uh, it's a 4-3 for 4 and a red. It, it has Monstrosity 1 for 5 and 2 red, and then when it becomes monstrous, it deals 2 damage to each opponent and each cre creature your opponent controls, excuse me. Uh, interesting card for sure. Uh, I do not remember this one in particular, but I do feel like this is quite powerful. Uh, a one-sided shock to everything seems really, really good. Uh, that is a huge investment. I just want to point that out. You're first investing five mana and then following up with seven. That's pretty big. Uh, not only that, but for five mana, you're getting a four, three, which means it's going to be a little bit easier to burn out and uh, probably block or destroy in combat. So you just have to be a little bit careful. Uh, but if you can monstrosity this, I think it's huge. I think that's a really big game changer. Uh, sweeping the board for a lot of little dudes uh, and then dealing a little extra damage to the opponent could mean winning the game for you, uh, for all I know. It depends on the board state, obviously, but there are a lot of situations where that might be the case. And so, honestly, here, as much as I like the Feast of Dreams, I think I'm going to have to take this over it. Uh, that might be incorrect, uh, but I really, really think this is a powerhouse card, and it affects the board a little bit more prominently than the Feast of Dreams, in my opinion. Uh, Triton Cavalry is a 2-4 for 3 and a blue. It features heroics, and whenever you cast a spell that targets it, you can return target uh, enchantment to its owner's hand. So uh, this is obviously really, really good to bounce the opponent's enchantment creatures, things like that. Uh, not only that, but if they play something like an oppressive raise, you can bounce that back to the hand. Uh, very, very interesting card. I don't love it, uh, if I'm going to be honest. It's good, but it's a very tempo-focused card, and I'd rather have something that's just going to deal more damage, like the Wildfire Cer Cerberus, excuse me. Uh, and so I think between these two, I'd rather go with the red card over the blue card here. I do like bounce spells, I love tempo plays, but I think it's really hard to pass down that, that power play there. Uh, Agent of Erebos, <clears throat> excuse me, is an enchantment creature for, uh, enchantment creature 2-2 for 3 and a black. It features Constellation as well, so whenever it, uh, <coughs> or another enchantment, excuse me guys, enters the battlefield under your control, exile all cards from target player's graveyard. So this is a really interesting one, but it features stuff that's much more prominent in constructed, not so great in limited. Uh, it's great to be able to pull cards back from your graveyard, stuff like that, but it's hard to build around that in limited. And so a lot of people tend not to. Uh, and in that instance, this card really doesn't do that much. Uh, yeah, it exiles their graveyard and you may get some incidental value off of that. Uh, but in general, I don't think it's worth it, and I don't think it's the card I would pick here for sure. I'm looking for more powerhouse cards or powerhouse removal, uh, and this really doesn't fit into either of those categories. <clears throat> and then our rare here is Spawn of Thraxus. So it's a 5-5 five, five flyer for 5 and 2 red, and when it enters the battlefield, it deals damage to target creature or player equal to the number of mountains you control. This is very obviously the pick, I just want to point out. Uh, it's a 5-5 flyer for 7. That's already quite good just because it's an evasive threat. Yes, it's down 5-5 uh, five, five for 7. That does seem a little bit low, but that flying really makes up for it. On top of that, you can literally just win the game off of this. Uh, if you have enough mountains uh, and you play this out, you're going to be dealing a lot of damage. And so uh, not only can you deal with a problem creature on your the opponent's side of the field, but you can really just deal with the opponent if you need to. And so this is a pretty easy pick, in my opinion. I don't believe we got a foil here, no. So 
Spawn of Thraxus, absolutely the pick. Such a powerhouse card. Uh, it, it It's quintessential bomb material, and that's exactly what you're looking for early in the pack. Uh, so I guess feel free if you want to uh, disagree with me. Feel free in the comment section below. I don't know that uh, there's much of a better option in this pack, but this one seems pretty easy pick to me. So regardless, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.